We are all going to lose somebody in our life. It might be when we're nine years old, before we're even born, or when we're in our 20s, 30s. You know, everyone has a different story to tell and a different experience. I don't think most people understand, like, grief and what it is. It's not always the easiest to share about the person I've lost. I think it's important for people to hear my story because if anything happens like this to them, they know that it's okay to experience grief and to be sad because they lost someone that they love and it's okay. This summer I spent seven days filming a short documentary at Experience Camps. It's a free summer camp for kids 8 to 15 who have all lost a significant family member like a parent or a sibling. In the US, one out of five children are grieving. So why is it still awkward and taboo to talk about grief, death and dying? Here's what the campers had to say to me. My dad passed away. Um, from a very aggressive type of liver cancer. It was very sudden for my family. Obviously, grief is not something that will end. There's no timeline for grief. Like, people usually categorize it into five stages, but I had a hard time believing that because I would have intense moments of sadness, which I still do sometimes, but that's okay and that sometimes I'll think about him and or I'll see things that will make me sad. Grief is scary. It's going to happen to every single one of us. And when things are that big and that scary, I think sometimes we turn and we run from them. And instead our campers are learning to turn into it. My mom passed when we were four and losing a mother, I probably say like losing a mother at such a young age. I don't know, a lot of people say they can like they can like relate or they can like, they can, they say how it feels, but like, I don't know if that's like really true. Our dad, last November, he died of suicide. That was just before Thanksgiving. My mom was murdered in our house. Some people said I was lying about my story and that made me feel hurt and felt like I couldn't really talk to them about anything. You end up like me. You become, you bottle up all your feelings and then you become very, very, very emotionally unstable, which is not a good thing. People do not like talking about grief. People like to check the box of, I said, I'm sorry for your loss, and then never bring it up again. We know that when people feel isolated, that can increase chances that they will experience symptoms of depression, symptoms of anxiety. How many times could I tell you that somebody said, oh, you shouldn't feel that way, or that's not a valid way to feel, or oh, they wouldn't want you to feel that way. They wouldn't want you to be sad. Sometimes I wouldn't tell the truth. I will say like my father went away, he went on a plane trip somewhere. I know. I shouldn't have to hide that like someone I loved died. Some examples of stigmatized death are suicide, overdose, and homicide. And I think when people die in this way, it can be really hard to share about it. They go straight to like, what happened to him? They don't really are like, are you doing good right now? They just go straight to asking questions. My brother died by suicide and after he died, nobody talked about it. I heard whisperings at his funeral. How did he do it? Does anybody know? What method did he choose? Why did he do it? Was he sad? Did they know he was gonna die? Because that implies that you could have done something different. Unlike other deaths, like natural causes, like um, illness or something, it, uh, it could have been prevented. It's just really hard to know that. People who have someone die by stigmatized death feel that weight. We had found out that he didn't go to the doctor like he was supposed to. 
his medical records that said, please go, he didn't show up to any of them, so. Kids come in and they're angry, especially when it has to do with a sudden loss. They're angry that the person took their own life. They're angry that the person was walking there when they were shot. They have complicated emotions because we're complex humans. We need people that validate that. If it's hard to hear, that's okay. It's the person's story, it's their truth. And I think if we're able to validate the range of emotions that come with grief, that we're helping kids process and heal. I can be happy and sad, and most people have it, and it's normal basically most of the time. Now I actually know loss, and it's definitely shaped me into a more mature person. A lot of people think that they aren't allowed to be happy after losing someone, but having people around you that are the same age and they've had a similar circumstance happen to them, you can realize that it was not your fault, it's just how life works, and that you can grieve a lot easier that way. Not everybody's grief is the same. It's okay to be sad, mad, happy, and laughing, or do whatever you feel is necessary. Trust the process. It's good to share, because like in the long run, it'll help going to therapy, going to counseling. Like It'll make you feel better, be more confident, and like have more positive energy towards yourself. Find someone that you feel safe with. It's good to feel vulnerable, because you can't always be in a shell sometimes. Sometimes you might have to stick your head out like a little turtle. In our Grief Camp documentary, you'll learn a lot more about these kids' stories and you'll be able to witness, like I did, how they really learn to embrace grief. Oh, right, right. So good to see you, buddy. Let's get your stuff. I look forward to getting to know you guys. We are all here to support you and all want you to have the best week ever.